Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lena. Well, I got two things to share today and it is a Happy Mail and then a tiny haul. But let's start with the Happy Mail. Happy Mail! It is uh, from Sandra, Scraps to Beauty. She's got a channel here on YouTube and she sent me these stickers. Oh my god, they're so cute. It's mermaids and um, it's just like lovely made kind of manga manga mermaids I love them a lot <laughs> thank you so much Sandra you are so cute oh I love this one when she's like sitting in something in the shape of the moon and then <clears throat> yeah <laughs> I haven't read the card yet because I think she sent me some some paint and it's completely stuck to the card <laughs> So I think that I will just gently try and open it. <laughs> and um, I'm super excited. I think it's the ma Mesha. Ooh, okay. There must be some sort of honey as a binder maybe since it's so sticky. Okay, I'm just going to try and remove the washi tape. Oh my god, if if it's what I think it is, the Misha watercolors, I am so going to paint with it today. <laughs> I can't wait to try it out. Uh, this is the Weathered Rose. And this is Ultramarine Magenta. It's a generous size of swatch. Like, it's bigger than the dot cards from Daniel Smith. Tiger's Eye. And the, uh, oh my god, oh, I think I uh, teared out the name now, and I also need to watch out for this tag here. Okay, oh man. <laughs> uh, this is uh, something with maybe flame, actually. <coughs> uh, I think it says like, hi Alina, I hope you like them. Hugs from Sandra. But I, I'm pretty sure it's the Masha Wong. Wang? No, not Wang. <laughs> I need to look up the name. Thank you so much, Sandra. I'm going to save this tag here. I am going to try and paint with it. I think I can just uh, wet it and then gently peel off the the paper that's on top of it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll make it work. <laughs> this is just exciting. Super granulating. You can see it on this card right here. It's going to be so exciting to try it out. I can't, I can't wait. I'm going to make... Um, a painting with it for sure but thank you so much Sandra you are so generous I'm just so happy <laughs> that you, you just kind of know my love for watercolor right <laughs> okay I got a tiny haul to show it's not a lot but I just wanted to say you know what I bought this brush set uh, a while ago from Christy Rice collection or what's it called I really love this a pointy tip on this brush right here I really think that it uh, it's the first for me to paint with such a pointy tip and I couldn't understand it I was like why haven't I <laughs> tried this uh, style of brush before and then I looked at my collection can you see something that just goes on and on in my brushes they are almost all of them this super large non pointy tip and it's a da vinci cosmospin this is a terry harrison but all of them have this uh, very large non pointy tip and i think that's what i love about this one so i went online and then i found this brush set here 
and I'm just going <laughs> to open it up. There are some flat brushes in here, but I'm more interested in the two round tips. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, these two right here, they look pretty good. These two right here. Oh my god, it's good. It looks good. This one is also funny, right? That cat's eye. And then we got a little bit of an angle. And then the the flat brushes. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm going to unwrap them off camera because it's going to be like noisy. And then I bought eight books. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. <laughs> it's just like eight tiny books. <laughs> and I know you guys have seen them all before. I have seen them a bunch of times, but just um, never really pushed <laughs> the buy button on them. But this time I just uh, took them with me in my haul. <laughs> it's it's the, um, like transparent sheets that you can use for collage and decorating and whatnot but it's kind of fun and i like the tim holt uh vibe that it it have on most of them and then i saw on the pictures that there was something with flowers where was it really likable could it be this one botanical garden yeah this one look mushrooms <laughs> who does who don't love mushrooms right and flowers so yeah that's what sold me you know like the Tim Holtz vibes and then the flower flowery ones yeah but it's gonna be uh, fun to just figure out what to do with this oh this is like super dark like just black and and white moon faces almost like x-rays <laughs> yeah but I'm gonna figure out a way to include this but um, let me try and um, get these nice swatches ready for some painting oh man I can't hardly wait I can't wait okay and now to the painting session I wanted to use the new ephemeris that I just bought so I'm just uh, taking out some sheets that I think will match well with the colors that I received and it's called Mesh's Handmade Watercolor and I got a sample of the pan called Tiger's Eye that's a yellow the one that I'm using right there and then I got a sample of Weathered Rose and that's the color that I'm using right there <laughs> it's gonna be a long video right <laughs> and then I also got a sample of the ultramarine magenta that I'm using later on and the last one was a little bit stick uh, sticky so I can only read the word fire but let's just call it fire it's an orange and oh my god this is like really nice paint really really nice and just totally granulating paint so I kind of knew to begin with <laughs> before I started that this is gonna be like a very special painting session for me so I'm working on Arches 300 rough um, 300 GSM uh, not rough what is it called like um, cold press it's called oh my god that just slipped me <laughs> it's a cold cold um yeah i just said it uh, yeah i don't really have my brain with cold press <laughs> i don't have my brain with me today for some reason <laughs> and um i chose this paper because that's the best paper i have in the house because i think that i was in for like a really cool painting experience and i really was I decided only to use these four colors for the face 
So naturally the face is gonna look a little bit spooky, but hey, you know, Halloween is coming up. <laughs> so I hope that you don't get too spooked looking at this. I decided not to use any color pencil, any Posca for white highlights, nothing, nada, just the four sample of paint that I got. And I try to re-wet the paper before I go in and deposit the color, so that's how you kind of activate the granulation, letting it dry in between a lot of layering, where I remember to re-wet the paper with the... Um, a wet brush or a mister and I, I did not record that because you know I want to keep it kind of short <laughs> but this was really really a nice painting experience thank you thank you so much Sandra for gifting me these samples and letting me try to paint with this I was so curious when I saw you and Patty uh, swatching out your purchase of these Masha wonderful handmade watercolors they're really, really nice quality. Yeah, I can see where <laughs> with them, why they cost so much. But, oh my God, it's just, um, it was stunning. Um, I have been uh, <laughs> thinking about what I should paint. I ended up with a face up close. But I was actually thinking about if I should make a mermaid because I just watched The Little Mermaid. It's been released on Disney a couple of days ago. And I was thinking of you when I watched it, Sandra. And uh, I wanted to ask you something. <laughs> because there is a scene in the beginning of The Little Mermaid that made me go, Ooh. <laughs> And it was uh, this elderly guy yelling at Prince Eric and I actually recorded I went into the living room and then I recorded what he's yelling and it just cracked me up okay I'm gonna play it are you ready <laughs> isn't it funny <laughs> I was actually on the treadmill while I was watching the movie and then suddenly I hear this guy yelling through the speakers in the sound bar, pay attention and it immediately reminded me of Eileen. <laughs> it just cracked me up. And I just wanted to know, you know, if you when you were in the movie <laughs> just laughing too because that is just so hilarious. Oh my god. But okay, back to the painting that was a little bit of a rabbit hole. Here I'm using the Ultramarine Magenta, and oh my god, it is so beautiful when it granulates. The heavy PBK29 blue pigments sinks down, and then the magenta runs off. So it actually separates in a very, really awesome way. <laughs> you cannot see it right now when I'm painting it, but when you leave it alone and just let it dry on its own, the magic slowly happens so lots of water lots of patience lots of layer and then that's how I just slowly went through this uh, painting session and I enjoyed every second of it it was just a uh, yeah you know I wanted to go nuts you know <laughs> put in a lot of colors <laughs> but they are so strong and potent I don't know if you guys can tell by just what I've been layering right now um, the colors are so vibrant and strong you know like a really uh, runny also um, color so it, it likes to intermix with each other and the tiger eye was pushing to the ultramarine magenta you know fighting for the, the paper so it's just a pleasure to watch and I also dragged in the shadow of the orange fire into the neck of the girl because I was um, interested to see how is it gonna mix and granulate <laughs> so it was fun to drag in these strong colors to the face I'm taking a lot of risk um, painting in the face because I actually think it was difficult to work with these colors um, and it had that kind of a, a scary it's scary, <laughs> spooky look for a long time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, um, 
yeah, kept on adding colors. I was I was more interested in painting the background, to be honest, because that's where I had a lot of substrate that I could wet up and then glaze over with, um, yeah, this this wonderful granulating pigments. So that was like super fun, you know, making it work on its own instead of working inside a confined space like a face sometimes is where you're very careful that colors don't run too crazy <laughs> when you're painting in a, a skin tone on a face. I really, really enjoyed working on Arches paper with this paint and I, I kind of recognize a lot of the yeah, how can I say, like, this is like super expensive paint, right? It's way out of my budget. But of course, I would love to see if I could create it myself, because I recognize some of some of the paint <laughs> while I was painting with it. So uh, if you're interested in just being um, a, a nerdy um, watercolor freak like me, in the end of this painting session, I'm going to give you my uh, opinion about how I'm going to make my own substitute for these wonderful Masha handmade watercolors. Uh, because uh, it's out of my budget, but I really love the feeling of painting with them, especially there's a lot of things to say. Okay, I know this looks like an open flesh wound. <laughs> But uh, I just wanted to show while the paper was still wet how vibrant and beautiful it is because at this stage I had not experienced the drying time that much so I don't know how much it will be pushed back when it's dry so that's why I'm recording and filming it while it's wet and here you can see it dried up. Can you see the shift there is? Yeah, watercolors are often most beautiful in wet state and then of course they dry up but it's like two different looks wet watercolors and then dried up watercolors but I love them both uh, for the eyes I'm trying only to use the ultramarine magenta in a very very um, mass tone because I don't want to use black I don't want to grab for colored pencils or anything else I want this page to be just representing those four swatch uh, dots. I mean, and it's it's possible because the magenta is so dark. So I kind of use it as a, a black. Um, yeah, I didn't... Uh, <laughs> I don't know really how much to say. I was just zoned in in myself when I made this painting. It was such a nice painting session, you know, really enjoying really enjoying it so it's a little bit difficult to put words on it here because it's a feeling between you your brush and the paper and um, all in all it's just such a nice um, substrate the arches to work on with this type of watercolor the next drawing I'm gonna do is gonna be on hot press so I kind of can see the difference between using a cold press rough paper and a hot press smooth paper because some granular paints actually act differently on those two substrates so that will be my next treat and I think I got enough paint it was really generous big dots on these uh, dot cards they are the same as like six of Daniel Smith's dots if you're familiar with the Daniel Smith dot card, that's how generous these dots are. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just amazing. Yeah, soon I'm gonna be ending this uh, speed up paint and then go directly into my little silly epilogue of how I'm gonna substitute these watercolors because uh, man. Want monster <laughs> woke up when I painted with these. Such beautiful colors. I totally understand why you and Sandra and Patty 
purchased them. They are just so yummy. And this is just four of them. <laughs> Here you see the painting up close. Sorry for the shaking handheld camera. Yeah, really likable with that gold paint to frame in the tickets. Gold and these colors goes well together. Okay, I got a hot press 300 GSM 100% cotton from Moleskine, Moleskine. So I think I want to try and make my swatches on the hot press because I'm interested in knowing how it behaves on the hot press paper. And I don't want to waste <laughs> a lot of paint from the samples. So, okay, before I start, let me just get some color into the... Um, so it doesn't look so glared out. Before I, I start this little <laughs> embarrassing section, <laughs> I just want to come with the disclaimer that I know nothing. I am just an amateur. I don't know what I'm talking about. So you can just start taking a block and make a list of all the wrong assumptions and mistakes that I'm going to show you now. But it's just based out of my feeling and intuitive uh, observation when I fool around with my own humble <laughs> collection of watercolor. But um, let me just start. Um, there is the, let's start with the, the tiger's eye. And I'm going to keep the camera Maybe a little bit high. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. The tiger's eye. First, I'm going to wet the area before I swatch it. And I'm doing it to give the granulation place to play on and disperse itself. Isn't it beautiful? That very aso yellow with that um, pushed back granular dark pigment. I hope the camera picks it up. What to do about the light? Maybe you can see it here. Yeah, I really love it. It's so beautiful. But when I paint with it, it's like I recognize the flow. It makes me think of Aquasol as a wedding agent instead of gum Arabic because it's a mover. You know, it's just, look how it just, it's, it's a mover. So, uh, if I had to make <laughs> my <laughs> substitute for this paint, I would uh, dig into my core hence a yellow light and then add PBK 11 for the granulation and I'm just gonna show it and this is where I'm raising up the camera so you can see that I am picking from pants here and there Definitely Aquasol as a, the wedding agent. Agent. And then a PBK 11 for the heavy granulation. And now you can see my mix is a little bit off. It's not so um, yellow. So I'm going to put in a little bit of nickel aso yellow because that's my first idea when I saw the paint that was uh, the nickel aso yellow and now when I lay that to my paper can you see how the aquasol just make it run <laughs> and um, it's 
a matter of ratio. Now I'm coming in with something that's got a little bit more PVK11 because you have to, I don't know the measurement of how much they did of each to get the exact batch that made the tiger's eye, but I think I'm pretty close. Um, I can add more over here because I'm wetting the area. Coming in with more. You can like really tell that nickel aso yellow. So let me just make mine. I'm adding more nickel aso yellow to mine here. Does it really show up? Now I'm gonna try just to put in nickel aso yellow and then a little bit of PBK that was a lot. Oh. Yeah. I just get that same feeling, you know. So that's how I would um, make my own tiger's eye. The one called Fire. I was first thinking if it was the Sennelier Chinese Orange, but then I realized no, 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 no. It's Core Binder. It's the Aquasol. It's not the Gum Arab Arabic that's in the Sennelier because it's a little bit slow. So I am definitely keen on that. It's the going to be a mix of. Like this is, oh I'm sorry, I didn't <laughs> show you the, I'm picking up from the sample here, so you say, that, see that I am not making any mistakes by dipping in the wrong pan. <laughs> that could happen, right? Okay, this is not fair because I'm picking up some paper from the, I need some clean paint, just paint. Oh, that's going to be tough. Okay, there is a lot of crumbles in this of the paper, so that's not so fair. Okay, I was thinking that this mix, maybe I can get close to it if I use the transparent pyro orange from Core to get that running flow. And then mix it up with PBK11. <laughs> a lot of uh, PBK11. But that's the dark sediment that I can see in the bottom when it's dried up. So I take my transparent pyro orange and then I add in some PBK. I find it a little bit too dark, so a little bit more of the transparent pyro orange until I think I hit some sort of the same tonal value. It is so nice. And the, the feeling, you know, to paint with this is just so similar, I think. The way that the paint behaves, I really like it. And of course you can add more of the pyro orange. Yeah, really like it a lot. But we have to wait until it dries up to see the the result. Then there was the weathered rose, and that really threw me a curve. Um, let's swatch it out. Oh shoot, I forgot to wet the paper first. <laughs> it is so beautiful. When it lands, it doesn't move much. Can you see that? So not a lot of movement. 
but what is surprising about this mix is that it got a greenish olive granulation when it dries up and that really threw me a curveball because uh, green and red are opposite that complementary on the color wheel so they will you know create mud so I was thinking hmm <laughs> I actually think that there is a component of the core magenta in this because you can see it separate can you see that separation right there maybe if I missed it you will release the magenta you can see how I release some magenta right there and I don't know why it's being released like that the violet ultramarine magenta from Masha does the same it releases magenta so in my noodle I'm thinking like this could it be that it's a mix of gum arab paint with a core magenta that got like the aquazole wetting agent so when you wet it you activate the wetting agent from the core and that's why the magenta runs away I'm just thinking out loud <laughs> and to get something from Schmincke with an olive undertone I think you need to look at the granulation tube set called the Shire and find some sort of an olive so that's what I did I took some magenta from Core And then I took a glance at, and there are so many to pick from. I'm looking for an olive or something with a brownish undertone. So I chose the one called Tundra Green. And there was just something inside of me thinking that you should not mix the <laughs> Tundra Green with the magenta, right? Yeah, that's how I felt. But you know what? When it dries up, it's actually very, um, looks the same, like, like the masher paint. Look how you cannot see the green, it's like camouflaged in. And then, to make a fair comparison, let me also mist this one so kind of looks similar can you see the green is turning up over here it's so beautiful oh I think I maybe need some more of the green actually oh that was probably too much but that's it I, I don't know the ratio of the, the their mixes so uh, it's difficult for me to figure out in what ratio to put it in okay now I'm thinking about the ultramarine magenta from Masha which is so so beautiful it's a very granulating paint that got heavy big pigments of PBK 29 ultramarine and then it has <laughs> this wonderful quality that when you let it disperse in a lot of water a magenta tone will appear like like a magenta will be released and dissolved into the water and then take off you know just like the core magenta does let me see if I can trigger it on this paper but I'm gonna miss it we're just gonna let it sit and I want you to notice how the magenta is getting released more and more in the edges and the blue ultramarine heavy granulated pigments are sinking down to the paper so when the, you move it around you can actually see more of the magenta in the edge can you see the magenta right there 
that's so freaking magic. <laughs> Isn't it just magic? Okay, so my uh, little noodle things that... How about taking a slow mover like the Schmincke Galaxy? What is it called? We got different kinds. We got an, a Galaxy Violet. Or we can take a blue, thunder blue, like thunder blue. So let me just try with the thunder blue first. I'm going to take the camera up. Oh. So magenta. And then let's try with the thunder blue. And then put it down. Maybe a little bit more magenta. It's a little bit. That was too much. Can you see that? Let me come in with more of the blue. Oh, that was probably once again too much. Let's try and mist it just for fun. This is a much better example of how the magenta's wedding agent is running off. Like it can run a long, a long way, but the heavy blue PBK29 pigments stays put. Just like on the Masha paint where the blue pigment is laid down and then now I got a buckle on my page. That's why the magenta ended up landing there. But yeah, now you can actually, they're not completely dried up, but you can kind of see, you know, the beginning of some similarities. And it's the first time that I swatched them on this um, hot press paper. So of course you can make swatches like this on cold press rough paper and see if you get a different result. But yeah, that's how... I want to um I want to play with what's left of these swatches and when I run out of them and if I'm not able to finish off my drawing I will try and continue with my own mixes here to see if uh, it helps me <laughs> so yeah there was just um yeah my two cents on on this and I once again is not I'm, I'm not I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> look how bad this paper is you can see when it's really saturated that it kind of it's like yeah that's a shame it's a moleskine moleskine so not the best paper pad but okay <laughs> I will end this now bye bye Oh boy, I'm just so annoyed that I picked the wrong paper to show this on. And then I look at my palette. These are my mixes that have dried up. And then I think that my palette actually gives a better example than my really bad <laughs> swatching on the paper. Because look at this. Can you see that granulation down there? It's very similar to the tiger's eye and then I got it also here on the orange but not so much because there's not so much of the PBK 11 in it but if we let this dry out it will do the same you know with letting the heavy PBK fall down and leaving the orange on top you can already see how it's uh, separating right now and look here you got that greenish undertone and the magenta on top and it's because some of the pigments are heavier than others so the heavy one goes down and then the lighter magenta goes on top as a glaze also here you got like total separation from the blue and then that magenta 
oozing out of it. <laughs> and this is exactly what I saw when I painted. You know, I, I saw this this blue coming out and then magenta laying next to it. And on the orange, I saw orange and then with some black small grains in the bottom of the paper. And here I saw that, that green, you can almost see it's the same. Yeah, that is just, um, yeah, I just um, wanted to <laughs> do this for myself because I want to use up these incredible nice um, paint up and then I'm going to run out of it in the middle of a painting. But now at least I know how I can substitute and make it last a little bit longer. So thank you guys for watching. I wish you a super nice weekend. Bye-bye.